not more artists, more people that are willing to speak out and say, you know, freedom and the freedom to s of speech, the freedom to create is much more important than any one administration's uh, agenda. I mean, they would all scream fascism if Bush would have tried this or anybody else would have tried this. Where are people's principles? Do they have any? You know, I've been getting a really positive response to the article and uh, to this whole issue. I, uh, on on uh, Big Hollywood, I've gotten a ton of comments. I think it's from the art community or from, from the left or from the Tea Party tinfoil hat people, as others like to call them? Well, Big Hollywood is an art community. Okay. Um, I, I believe it's a right-leaning art community, but... Um, uh, they, are, they are out there, okay. and I know because I've been, been, been reached by them throughout this whole ordeal. Um, I want to play again, and then uh, we'll, we'll come back. Um, I want to play again the brand new conversation. America, listen to what they're saying. National Endowment of the Arts. Was the White House on this phone call? Uh, yes. Okay. White House is on the phone call. This is the National Endowment of the Arts. Listen to what they say carefully. Incidentally, came out two weeks after this phone call. That's next. But they, they didn't know that you were recording. I don't believe so. No. Okay. I, I, I believe that yeah, they might have recorded it themselves. I'm not sure. Sure, but they're not going to release it. Um, this is one of the things that they said. NEA for propaganda. Here it is. I would encourage you to pick something, whether it's healthcare, education, uh, the environment. different kinds of art that we would see come out of something like this? Uh, you would see posters, uh, potentially music, um, art installations, uh, gallery shows, touring gallery shows, and they uh, would be shirt designs. They would be paid for by tax dollars to the NEA? Not necessarily. And, I, and that's one thing I, want, I do want to make clear. They did not say, you know, specifically speak to a certain policy and we are going to pay you guys to do this, but um, you're on the phone, basically, with the largest funder of the arts in the United States. Right. And you are in our community that gets funded by these people. Right. I mean, th 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 that conversation shouldn't be had. Right. It's simple. It's a simple topic. Okay. If they weren't implying that, what would be the problem then? Why would they have to be? Could you play? Could you play again, please? The the uh, the soundbite where they were talking about we have to be careful with our language here. Why would they say this? If this is just the beginning. The first telephone call, the brand new conversation. Uh, we are just now learning how to uh, really bring this community together to speak uh, with the, the government. Um, what that looks like legally, uh, we're still trying to figure out the laws and put in government websites on Facebook. Uh, and, and All right. Why? Why would they say that if it was if they weren't implying that there was some give and take here? You know, that's a question for them. I, they've been uh, avoiding comments for quite some time now. I mean, that has been out for a little over a week. And uh, I don't believe that they've gotten one comment from the Washington Times, and I believe mm -hmm. they denied sending out the invite, which yeah. I gave you. So, which, is, uh, which is really, which is really weird, uh, because we've seen yeah. it. Um, uh, let, me, uh, let me ask you this. Play uh, NEA No 
knows how to make us stink. But try to explain to me what you think they meant by this. Again, it's kind of an implied uh, uh, steering in a certain direction. I mean, you're talking to a crowd that supported Obama. But you're talking to a crowd that helped that hope poster. You know, and I and I listen to that, and you know, honestly, it, it, I feel kind of bad to have to bring this out, but facts are bipartisan. And I want the people that were on that phone call and others in our community to know this is not what the government was meant to do, and this is not what the National Endowment for the Arts was meant to do. They are there to promote the arts, increase access to the arts, and be a leader in education in the arts, not to push issues. Well, they, they'll say that I was just, they were just educating. Um, uh, tomorrow we're... They were edu <laughs> yeah, that's what they're doing. Um, we will, uh, tomorrow we're going to follow this a little, uh, a little closer. I'm going to show you what happens when the art community and government uh, combines. But let me just show you a couple of things. Now, uh, Patrick, um, this artist was one of the guys that was on the... Uh, was on the phone call, but we don't know for sure if these were a direct result, but they just coincidentally were uh, created a couple of weeks after that phone call. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Here's one of them, health care for I, all. I can't see the art. Okay. Okay, health care for, yeah. Okay. And then there's the sick. It has it. Sick shouldn't equal broke. It's a rock the vote. Um, demand health care. Yeah, both of those were from rock the vote. Both okay. of those were from rock the vote, and they were on the phone call. Coincidence? Do you think coincidence? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I, I, I don't think so, no. I mean, the, the announcement came out uh, several days, excuse me, about a week or so after that, and it was pretty clear. They basically said enough is enough, uh, universal health care, and um, the timing is just, it's too much of a coincidence. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it, and this person was also part of the pitch team as well for, for the art, for the uh, community. So, Patrick? Thank you for your bravery. Thank you. I, I mean, I don't know how popular you're going to be in the art community now, but God bless you, man. Thank you for your bravery, and we'll talk again. We'll be right back.